Hey, what's going on YouTube? Uh, I'm gonna make a video for you guys, um, basically showing what kind of performance gains you can expect from overclocking your video cards. Now, as you can see, I'm currently using two EVGA GTX 680s. Uh, they're actually a superclocked edition, so you're not gonna see um, as much of an overclock from these cards as you would from a reference. So what I mean is basically they're already overclocked 100 megahertz, so I'm really only going to be able to push them probably an additional 50 megahertz, um, which will bring them up to about 1215. I'm not sure sure the exact um, base clock of these cards. I think it's around like 1025 or something along those lines. But basically, um, you're not going to be able to get the Kepler above 1250 as far as I can tell from the forums and stuff. Um, somebody out there may may have done and I may be completely wrong on that but um, the farthest I can push these cards is usually about uh, 1215 uh, megahertz and I can usually get about 400 megahertz on the uh, additional megahertz on the RAM so um, basically what I'm gonna do is just using EVGA Precision X here I'm going to add some GPU clock and then I'm going to benchmark it with uh, 3D Mark 11. And then I'm going to add some memory clock and do the same thing. And then show you guys the uh, results. So you'll be able to see if, you know, it's really worth it to overclock or not. So stay tuned. Um, I'll get through this pretty quick. So, yeah. Alright, so how I'm going to start this basically is I'm going to um, run 3D Mark 11 without any overclock on the card so we can get kind of a uh, reference number you know to base the scores on to see what increase we're getting so yeah just stay tuned and um, I'll be right back with the first results alright guys we are back uh, we got our first P score which is 16,356. Now keep in mind this is um, in SLI and the cards are pre overclocked. So the next test we're going to run is going to be um, 200 megahertz on the memory clock and we're going to see what kind of gains we get from increasing the memory clock. Alright guys, we're back. I forgot to mention that I actually moved the uh, power target up to 132%. I'm just going to keep it there for all the uh, benchmarks just to make things easier. Um, so as you can see we got plus 200%. Uh, I ran the benchmark and we got a p-score of 16505 which is a 149 megahertz increase. Now remember that's just the memory clock. I haven't um, upped the GPU clock yet. And as for temperatures, um, the MasterCard hit uh, 46C and um, the slave hit 44 so that's pretty much normal about what I get um, I generally get a 15 degree Delta it's about uh, 30 C in here so I'm going to um, up the memory clock once again I'm gonna double it to uh, 400 megahertz and we'll see what kind of scores we get so we'll be right back alright guys we are back with the results from the 400 megahertz increase on the memory clock. Um, we didn't see any increase in temperature. The max temp is still at uh, 46. Remember that's uh, on water though. Um, we got a P score of 16,567 which is only a 62 point increase. So even though we uh, doubled the overclock, we're not seeing much of a increase. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lower the memory clock. I'm going to up the GPU clock offset. So the memory is going to be at zero again, and then the GPU clock, we're going to increase it to uh, 25 megahertz. So we'll be right back with the results. All right, so we got the plus 25 megahertz on the GPU clock offset which gave us a p-score of 16,520 still saw no increase in the max temperature still at 46 Celsius and that gave us 
an increase of 164 points in 3D Mark, just moving the um, GPU clock up 25 megahertz. So I'm gonna move it up to 50 megahertz and we'll be right back. Okay, so as you can see, plus 50 megahertz there. Ran 3D Mark, got a P score of 16,699, which is a 343 point increase. Temps are still the same. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to crank up the memory clock up to 400 megahertz so we can get a final P score with the full overclock. I haven't got, been able to get the card to overclock um, more than plus 50 megahertz. So we'll be right back after I run this last test. So yeah. Hey guys, here's our final reading. So you can see I got plus 50 megahertz, plus 400 megahertz. And we have a P-score of 16,865, and our temps have stayed the same, so they haven't broken 46 Celsius. And that P-score would be an increase of 509 points from the original. Alright, so if you do the math, we basically got a 3% uh, gain in performance from that uh, overclock. Um, so is it all worth it for just uh, 3% gain in performance? Uh, I would say yes and no. Um, if you need to eke out every last bit of performance in order to play a certain game, then by all means, you know, overclock your GPU. But if temperatures and stability become an issue and you're already getting, um, you know, decent frame rates, then I wouldn't, I wouldn't bother. Um, I actually only just started overclocking my GPU memory because I just got this 27-inch uh, monitor, which is 1440p. It's the Dell U2711. Um, my cards are only 2 gigabyte, and this monitor eats up that memory pretty quickly. Um, but when you do overclock, you have to consider that not all games will respond well to the overclock. So for example, I can play pretty much any game on my system um, with the overclock cranked all the way up, except for Battlefield 3. Um, Battlefield 3, no matter how, my, you know, how minute the overclock is, it will crash eventually. Um, I don't know why it does that. Um, I thought it was a driver issue, but I've updated the drivers multiple times since I've been trying to overclock it. NVIDIA's come out with, I think, three different drivers in like the last month so it's definitely not that I don't know if it well perhaps it is that I'm not really sure but um I don't know um, another thing you gotta consider though is that um all pre overclocked cards are held to the same limitations as the reference cards just because they have a factory overclock doesn't mean you they can handle more of an overclock so what that means if a card can only really handle an additional 150 megahertz on the G on the GPU clock offset, and you have a pre-overclocked card that's already overclocked 100 megahertz. You're only going to be able to do an additional 50 megahertz. So just because it's factory overclock doesn't mean you can overclock that card even more. So don't expect that um, from from a factory overclocked card. Um, the benefit of having a pre-overclocked card, though, from my experience, is that you can have an overclock and it will remain stable no matter what. So, even though my um, 680s are overclocked, um, I can still play Battlefield with them fine, you know. But, you know, this, this could just be a problem with my cards. You know, not being able to play Battlefield with an overclock. So... I'm glad that I do have them in that respect because they are able to play Battlefield with an overclock and I play a whole lot of Battlefield. Um, also you have to consider that not all GPUs are created equally um, the same way that CPUs aren't created equally so if you you know a, a CPU you know a 2600K might be able to hit 5 gigahertz all day 
but then you get a different um, 2600K and it can only hit 4.5, you know? It's just kind of a luck of the draw, you know, you just kind of got to get lucky and hope you get that, you know, good ship. Um, I hope you guys learned something from this video. Um, if you guys are interested in overclocking your video cards, I highly recommend EVGA Precision X. Um, I also know MSI uh, Afterburner, a lot of people like using that. Um, it's really easy to do now. Um, it's pretty much foolproof. You just kind of uh, move the move the little sliders and then, you know, hope for the best. And then when it crashes, you have to move it back and re-benchmark it. So, thanks for watching this video, guys. Um, I'm going to be com coming back with you guys for more stuff. So, yeah. Peace out.